We now we come to one that's right up my street as industry and technology editor, namely the most important technological development of the past 50 years. This award is sponsored by ITSO, the smart card, the Kings, and could Lindsay Robbins, Robertson, uh, Director of Member Services with ITSO, join me at the front? Here comes Lindsay. First up um, is uh, some really uh, white hot technological stuff from the 60s. The automatic train operation uh, introduced with the opening of the Victoria Line. This was pretty clever for the time, especially the uh, precision station stops, and it was of course the first automatically operated uh, suburban railway uh, in the world. It was achieved with some quite simple technology at a time when electronics on railways were still in their infancy. That it was replaced only recently is a tribute to the original Westinghouse equipment. It was replaced with much more sophisticated systems, a radio-based distance to go, uh, from the same supplier, and the 30 trains an hour timetable came into service recently. We've all been waiting for this one. Uh, this is in fact, you may not believe it, but this is in fact a very youthful James Ab Adam Abbott, my editor, who I snapped at uh, Leamington Spa. It cries out for a caption competition and perhaps we'll have suggestions on the train back. Um, I took it at Leamington when we went to see the, pine, the pilot solid state interlocking it in at, uh, at Leamington. Uh, the SSI was yet one of, another of those breakthroughs from British Rail Research who thought the unthinkable and, and pushed it further. Uh, it's interesting at the time that um, it wasn't easy. People couldn't see how to apply electronics to signalling. Uh, they thought, do you, it might go wrong, do you have to have separate processors, do you have to have separate software? And the uh, brilliant engineers at Derby Research saw a way through that. Next, the significant development is the Aptis ticketing system, which I'm afraid uh, doesn't accept smart cards. Um, the all-purpose ticket issuing system was yet another example of British Rail pushing the technical envelope. In the 1980s, it transformed ticket sales with, among other things, the ability to, for the clerk to type in the first three letters, first letters of a destination, that became a choice on the screen. And uh, for techies in the audience, it, at its heart, was a bubble memory with the massive capacity at the time of 1.5 megabytes. And of course, it was also supported by uh, the ability to download fare, fares, uh, new fares structures, fares tables, and uh, also upload uh, revenue and so on. It transformed the railway's finances as well as ticketing. Now we come to three-phase drive, which we, uh, we were not pioneers uh, in Britain. Uh, we left that to other people because we de deemed that the technology was not really ready. The first really big three-phase drive was the German E120 class, um, which the Germans thought was absolutely wonderful, but uh, that was because they had their traction motors were the equivalent of Black & Decker AC motors always arcing and sparking, and three-phase was always going to be better. But the, the device, the Loco, had uh, 1,100 electronic power switches in it, which was a bit much. The French, of course, did it totally differently. They went for synchronous drive, which immediately became the only way forward uh, despite everybody else, and everybody else was out of step. We waited until the technology matured, uh, adopted three-phase drive, and of course the first one was the 323 uh, with, with, from, with Holec design, which was the first one in Britain to actually get a safety case uh, for signalling immunisation. So now we will find out uh, what is the most important technological innovation, and it is SSI. Would you like to come forward? <laughs> I can't resist at this point pointing out that uh, under rail track, um, their uh, project director called all the signalling big companies together and said, if you're still building SSI, you're going down a blind alley. That was in about 1998 or sometime like that. Uh, today, of course, it's SSI rules, you can buy new um, 
SSI, SSI compliant uh, interlockings, including from our sponsor, and you can still buy uh, original stuff because there's stockpiles of kit. So SSI, I think, is a worthy winner of this award.